Hi, I'm Sam from Centaur, and today we're going to take a look at how to clean up the slide potentiometers in a lot of ARP synthesizers. Uh, these are potentiometers made by CTS. They're absolutely no longer available these days, um, and they don't clean up as nicely as a lot of potentiometers from other synthesizers. So uh, the best thing to do with these is to actually take them off the circuit board disassemble them, uh, clean them up from the inside by hand, then put them back together. That's really the only way to really do a good job of these. So that's what we're going to take a look at today. So on this board you can see um, that some of these pots, the cleaner ones, have already been refurbished. These nasty ones have not been refurbished. The difference is these work mostly smoothly. These that one doesn't even move at all so you can see these are in terrible shape and uh, if you just spray them out with a cleaner and lube like you can do on some other slide pots it's just not going to work on these again the only way to make this right is to take these guys apart uh, clean them from the inside and then put the whole operation back together so the first step is going to be to remove the potentiometer from the circuit board and to do that we'll go, go in from the back side and you can see that these uh, pots are attached with a with a metal tab that pokes through the circuit board and that tab is then twisted and it's that twist that kind of holds it into place so the first step is going to be to untwist that and so we'll use some flat flat pliers and just grab the tab and twist it around carefully until it's straight with the hole and we'll do that on the other side as well now the problem here is that sometimes a little bit of that tab uh, will will remain poking through you can see maybe right there that there's a little bit of a nub there and so we're just going to cut that off with some wire snips and that should make it easier to pull this through the circuit board so we'll just cut off anything hanging on there and then once that's done um, we'll want to desolder the pot from the three points that it comes through the circuit board and for that we're going to use some uh, some desoldering braid So we'll just put that braid up against the solder point, apply heat to the braid itself, and then that's going to soak up the solder. And we'll do that to each of the three points. Just let it get hot enough and then the solder just magically goes right into the braid. Might have to hit them a time or two just to get all the all the solder up. And then if you just kind of bump each of the leads you can see if it's actually loose from the board or not. And so now we'll try to pull this pot off and looks like we still got some of the nub. Put your eye out there. All right, so now we can probably grab that with the pliers and start to push the pot through the circuit board. What we can also do is uh, get a flat screwdriver and you can gently pry up from the bottom if you have a good place to do that and start to work this pot out of there. It can be kind of ornery, but if you wiggle it back and forth and you see all the, the two lugs and the three solder pins moving, then you know everything's loose. It's just, uh, it's just being ornery about coming through there. And it's these end, end tabs that, that are tough to deal with. So we're 
get it pried up. We got one end free. There we go. You can see it kind of came out a little bit mangled, but that's okay. So the next step is now we want to take this nasty dirty pot that won't, barely moves and we're going to want to open it up and uh, to do that you can see that each end has has a uh, metal clip here and it kind of comes around this side and there's a metal piece and then it comes around this side it, it's actually kind of c-shaped and what we want to do is grab it on the bottom with some pliers and then we're going to gently bend that until it starts to come off of the uh, off of the end piece there so you can see it coming off so there's there's the end piece there now at first I thought it would be a good idea not to bend it like that but just to pry these uh, individual pins out but don't do that because if you start pulling these pins only they'll just break right off so so the real trick is to grab it on the on the big part at the bottom and then as you gently bend it off it kind of curves around and uh, bends that way instead of on these more fragile pins so you want to take that off of each side and and note also that that these aren't uh, just straight up and down they kind of they kind of go out and then down off the end of the pot and so we'll want to remember that when it's time to put them back on so now we'll grab this one, do the same thing, gently bend it around the mounting pin there, and now those are off. Now we can just take the pot apart, and you'll see that it comes apart in three pieces, the left half, the right half, and then the, uh, the shaft there. Okay, so now we have the pieces of the potentiometer laid out. You can see that there are five pieces all together. Uh, the two clips from the end, the uh, lever which contains uh, contacts in the middle, and then the two sides of the potentiometer. This side with just one solder pin down, uh, this just has a piece of metal there that the uh, contacts on the shaft rub against, and this side has a piece of um, resistive material that runs the length of it and the uh, shaft slides the contact along that material so um, wherever there's gunk and goop and dirt it's going to degrade the the uh, workings of this pot so we want to get this surface clean we want to get that surface clean we want to get the contacts on the shaft clean and then the last thing we want to worry about also is we want the pot to work smoothly so we'll uh, We'll get into doing a little bit of lubrication of that later. So we're gonna we're gonna do this cleaning with uh, a Q-tip and some rubbing alcohol. We'll just dip the Q-tip in the alcohol. And the first thing I like to hit is the uh, is the contacts on the shaft itself. Just give them a, a gentle rub and get off any oxidation or nastiness. And then, using the same Q-tip, I then clean the uh, resistive surface of the potentiometer. Just rub it back and forth and get all the goop off. That one doesn't seem to be too bad. And then, uh, while I've got that same Q-tip, I'll just then clean off the upper surfaces. This is where the where the lever slides, so we're going to want those clean and just get off any residual goop. And the top surface also, uh, this has a lot of stuff built up on it and that's going to grab when you try to slide that pot, so we want this surface nice and clean and smooth. You can see that got a lot of goop off of there. So now I'll take the other end of the Q-tip, get it in the alcohol, and I'll just swab this uh, metal surface here and then I'll also clean the rest of the insides of the pot 
you'll notice that the first thing I hit with the clean Q-tip is the uh, electrical surfaces where we need good contact and then after that I'm just kind of tidying up so I'm not so worried about electrical contact now I'm just getting all the goop off the other surfaces and I also like to just clean the uh, top of the shaft where it slides on the on the body of the potentiometer all right what I'm gonna do now is I'm uh, I'll take a rag and I'll just kind of push my fingernail through it and I'll use that to clean the inside channel of this lever where it slides on the uh, body of the potentiometer just to get more gook out and I'll also clean up the shaft itself because we want it to look nice and pretty okay now one other thing to note um, there, there's only one way all this will go back together so you don't need to worry about uh, if, if it goes this way or that way because the the shaft only goes one way on here and you'll see the the middle contacts um, they're, they're two wide ones on one side and two that are close together on the other side and you can see from from these parts of the potentiometer how they how they go the close ones go on to the black resistive surface and the ones that are more spread apart go on to the silver um, conductive part there and you can't you can't flip this around uh, and make it work because the pop won't go together correctly if you do you can't snap it together the right way so if it is the right way you'll feel that yeah the pot goes back together so you can't do it wrong um, now one other thing to take note um, sometimes this metal surface will get kind of pitted and rough and that's what will make the pot work roughly and, and not as smooth as you'd like to so you can take some really really fine sandpaper I think this is like uh, 600 grit or something I'm not sure um, and just give it a very light rub and that metal will shine up quite a bit real quickly with just a few strokes and it'll make the the pot work quite a bit more smoothly so that feels good so um, another thing I like to do is just scrape all the goop off of here I think this has peanut butter and barbecue sauce and no telling what all on this potentiometer so may as well get rid of it so I just give them a quick scrape to tidy up a bit small pocket knife is a good tool to have for this and now it's time to put it back together so we have some silicone grease here a little tube of grease and I can take just a little tiny dab of that on the tip of the knife this is the part that's actually going to rub against the body of the potentiometer so we'll just put a tiny amount of grease on there and then we can start to put it back together we'll just put that there we'll put the other half back on exercise it a little bit it actually works now and then we'll start putting these end clips back on so remember uh, the tab kind of pokes out rather than in when you snap it on the end so first we'll just hook it over the top kind of sideways and then we'll just turn it until it's back in and until we have the top back in place we're not going to worry about the bottom yet we'll do that on both ends so 
so now the pot will stay together. And now it's good to have two pair of pliers. I'm going to hold this end while I grab the tab with the other pliers, and now I'm just going to gently bend it back into position to where this uh, to where this piece is pretty straight. The tab is still a little off. We can bend that, and uh, we can give it a good squeeze now to, to get it nice and flat. You can see it's a little bit mangled. Most of them aren't that bad when you when you're done, but uh, that doesn't really have too much effect. Again, that part's just to hold the pot onto the circuit board, and uh, the the solder points do that as well, so it'll be firmly attached. All right, so we'll bend that side back on, and we'll give it a good squeeze with the pliers to get it flat. So now we have a working potentiometer that's ready to go back onto the circuit board. Okay, so now we're going to solder the slide potentiometer back onto the circuit board. It's going to go on a lot easier than it came off. So you'll notice two two solder pins, two solder pins there. We'll just line everything up. And snap it back into place. And now we'll do the same thing we undid a while ago. We'll take the metal tab and we'll twist it slightly. And while I'm doing that, I'm pushing up from the bottom just to make sure the, the potentiometer is firmly seated. And I, I only twist them about an eighth of a turn. These are twisted more than a quarter of a turn, which, I don't know, seems like there's more chance of breaking them that way. So once we have them twisted, uh, the pot is securely on the board. And now we'll just solder the three pins back into place. So we'll put the soldering iron against the pin and against the uh, against the trace on the board. Get everything hot, and then apply the solder. One, two, and three. The board is. Or the slider is back on the board. It's working. It's ready to go. So that's about it. Um, it's it's a fair amount of work to do each pot, but once you get it, it goes pretty quick. The only thing is, you got a lot of them to do on most any arc synthesizer. So it's a tedious process, but you can probably do it in a weekend. And your synthesizer will work much better for it. So that's about it. Um, Again, I'm Sam from Centaur. If you need any keyboard parts, come to centaur.com and we've got you covered. Thanks for watching.